I was born in Mombasa to working parents, pretty much in a middle class family. My orientation was largely influenced by the coastal and upcountry cultures where I attended school. My childhood was characterized with outdoor activities. I remember playing bladder, seven stones, hide and seek, and even football. I relished playing football with, my, with the boys. I often would find myself taking the position of a striker or a goalkeeper. I was a simple, shy girl when growing up, as Don has already alluded. I remember instances when my mom would engage a hairdresser to come home on Sunday to plate us, my sister and I. Beautiful Kilimanjaro lines, which would often be accessorized with a red ribbon. And it was to last us at least two weeks of school. Habitually, on the next day, I would find a spot, quietly undo my hair, comb, and revert to plating the now infamous matutas. Four large matutas I would plate myself. Fast forward, I go through school, I go through college, and I'm ready to face the world. My aspiration as a young girl was to become an accountant, follow my dad's footsteps, or become a banker. I admired bankers. I considered bankers to be smart, sharp, and I thought they had a lot of money. <laughs> so you can imagine how I felt when I finally secured a job in a financial institution. I was over the moon. My parents were proud of me. Time would fly by. I took pleasure in what I was doing, and I grew up the ranks in the organization. I was part of a great team, too. I envisioned my last day of work. What legacy would I leave? I envisioned a small gathering of colleagues, a few speeches here and there, a cake to share, and probably an after party. That's how we rolled whenever someone left the institution. But then with time, I got consumed, consumed with thoughts about what I would do if I was to leave employment. What was my purpose in life? What was my mission in life? January of every year is a month of introspection for me. I normally reflect on the year that passed, think of the lessons learned, my accomplishment, as I consider objectives for the new year. It was January 2018, at such a time, that I, ever, I first considered setting up a foundation for my side hustle, my business. First things first, I knew I needed to get my finances in order. I had some loans to clear, and I needed to also boost my savings if I was to raise capital. Come February of 2018, I enrolled for a personal financial management class, Centonomy. Graduated after three months, and I had everything laid out set. My ducks were in a row. I'd given myself a two, three-year plan, and I had it all figured out how I will have my side hustle in the next couple of years. Ten months ago, November the 2nd, on a beautiful Friday morning, about 11.30 a.m., I lost my job. I'm afraid we're going to have to ask you to leave, they said. My stomach cringed. Tears welled up my eyes. I sithed with anger and bitterness inside. 
21 years of everything I've ever had gone just like that. See, what I didn't mention is that I had been going through a disciplinary process. A disciplinary process over an incident that had taken place in the department under my care. Four grueling months of uncertainty and disquiet. Despite the odds being stuck against me as a leader, I held on to hope. Hope against hope that things may turn out different. But I was wrong. As I walked out of that five small meeting room and descended the five-story building, burdened, burdened with a A5 envelope, white, whose contents were my letter and my clearance documents. My walk to the car, a distance I was too familiar with, felt like a trek. It's a wrap, I called and I told my sister. It's over, it's done. And I remember all she could just tell me was, come, come home. I remember getting home to my place, wee hours of Saturday morning. And it's because I'd gone to my sister's place, and she had compelled me to spend the night, but around midnight, I begged her to leave. I just needed to go home and be alone. I was tired. I got home, kicked off my shoes, and blacked out. Woke up about 11.30 Saturday morning to my new reality. I stretched out my hand, and reached out for the white envelope that lay by the floor on my bedside. I pulled out the contents and for the first time read the letter that was dutifully served to me the previous day. Drowning in my sea of emotions, my tears gently flowed. I must have cried myself to sleep, because the next time I woke up, it was 4 p.m. Switched on my phone to numerous calls and messages from family and friends. Hey, Penny, it's going to be well. This is the new beginning that you needed. I guess one can never be too prepared. A couple of months later, a couple of weeks later, I would make a decision to return home. Home Mombasa, where my journey first started. It's been seven months, and it's a whole new experience. I'm settling into my new reality, having more bonding sessions with my family, relieving of childhood tales with my siblings, of course, the normal sibling tiffs will always exist. I've bumped into old friends, old acquaintances, and I'm establishing new connections. Yet on one side, I see the concern. I see the concern written on the faces of those close to me, those who care. As if wondering, how is she truly coping? And they normally come out in the form of conversations. My mom asking me, has that organization you wrote to responded to your letter? Or a random Monday morning call from one of my brothers, who we normally refer to as Kofi Annan, because he comes across as the voice of reason whenever we have our sibling differences. As if checking whether I'm up and about pursuing the business venture we discussed five months ago, or is it the one I so fervently spoke about two months ago? Or better still, is there a new one? Yes, because every morning, I wake up with new business ideas. Time has allowed me to reflect. I see a myriad of possibilities for my new beginning. 
Do I know how that new beginning looks like? Not really, at least not yet. But what I know is that I'm not at the same place I was in November 2018. I have grown emotionally, I have learned, and I'm moving forward. I've come to appreciate the value of a support system. To my family, to my girl squads, and to my friends, to the random WhatsApp messages that I receive, hey, just checking on you, how are you doing? And to the connections I've, est I've established. That has kept me going. I've come to learn that in this journey of mine, I need to take hold of the steering wheel and look out for the twists and turns. Look out for the highs and lows and the smooth rides and the rough rides, because that is part of my being. That in the rare days, I would wake up feeling lethargic, not wanting to engage or venture beyond the four walls of my room. It was okay for me to go through such emotions, because I'm human. As I set up my biashara, I find myself with plenty of time. Time being the most valuable resource I have right now, I've taken on to reading more books. I tell my story knowing that you may have your story. A story of different circumstances, maybe one of deeper anguish. I tell my story because I know it's possible, against all odds, to start again and thrive. It's just that thriving now may look a bit different, one day at a time. I'd like to leave you with a citation from a book I read not too long ago, Born a Crime, a comical autobiography of Trevor Noah, and I'll paraphrase, the things always work out. Life always turns out in your favor, even if it doesn't go according to plan. Consider anything that you may be going through right now, a transition, a transformation, that is necessary for you to get to your bliss and abundance. Thank you.